Port Chester Journal, 1877. Those who only occasionally pass through Milton and watch with interest from year to year the erratic growths of its rambling little chapel will not be astonished at the sight of its last and crowning improvement and will probably agree with us that a belfry, so simple, pretty, and appropriate, it would be hard to find. In June of the present year, money was raised from a strawberry festival and fair on the chapel grounds for the purchase of a bell and the erection of a tower. The bell, weighing 528 pounds, was raised to its lofty station and now sends its cheering call abroad through the village with every returning Sunday. One who remembers the original humble edifice cannot but see in its present enlarged and improved condition cause for further encouragement and thankfulness. There are several laws in this country that protect cultural resources and historic sites. One of the reasons why we do archaeology um, is to look for these cultural resources and to protect what, what's below ground for future generations. We start off by looking up historic documents. We go to local archives to try and find information about the site that we're going to be looking at. Next to it. We look at a myriad of different types of documents, from maps, atlases, to personal records, to deeds, land deeds, to photographs, and you know, aerial photographs, and a lot of different, different things to put together the picture of the property. Maps provide valuable information. There, sometimes they can show you what other buildings were on the property. It can give you the date that maybe the building first appeared on the property. And in Westchester County, for example, there's a, there's a series of atlases that were done starting in the 1860s that you can use to sort of look and see how properties change over time. A great newspaper article written in 1877 it really provided a little bit more about the architectural history of the Rye Meeting House, which is it's, it's just such a bundle of different contradictions and changes. There's so many additions that were put onto the building, and, but that little newspaper article from 1877 provided which came first. They first bought a small schoolhouse and brought it to the property. The women of the church then put together some, you know, by selling handiwork or needlework, and they added the cross-section addition, and then they added a library, and then they had a strawberry festival to add the bell tower. So that article really concentrated on the development of the building to, to what it looks like finally today. We try to, what's called, read the dirt. What you're looking at may be just a slight color change or a slight change in the texture or the context of the soil to see temporary changes to the soil. So it's not just the artifacts. We're looking at the soil to see, for example, along the side of the building, we were working to see if there was any type of builder's trench that was put in when the building was first installed and the foundations were put in or if there was any type of feature associated with it, maybe a cistern, which is a giant water tank that would have helped service the building. Um, a cistern is enclosed, mm -hmm. so you have like a mortar on the interior. Mm -hmm. and the, yeah, they do. the biggest surprise was the amount of domestic material on the site. Broken uh, ceramics, broken glass, um, <laughs> things like that, which appear to date to the early part of the 19th century rather than the late part of the 19th century. When we went there we were expecting to see 1860s and later materials and what we found was some materials that date much earlier than the 1860s and may be uh, associated with either other buildings that were around in the neighborhood or maybe there was a, a previous structure on the property before the school was built. And then we found this really interesting little thim thimble. Maybe it's associated with the needlework that the women were doing when it was a Sunday school in order to build the addition on the church. We're not really sure, but it's interesting because it really gives you a chance to have a three-dimensional association with someone from the past, just to have a physical artifact that you know somebody once used. A project will consume you. You start to think about what it was like 
to be a student here at Sunday school in 1867, 1870? What was it like to live in Rye at that time? So you do get consumed with, with, with the story as well as what we're finding. Some of it was earlier, so I'm a little bit consumed with why these earlier artifacts were there as well as some of the later ones. But um, yeah, you do you do tend to tend to find a connection to the people that once lived there, especially on historic sites, because it's it's much easier to make that connection.